Hello and welcome to another Yu-Gi-Oh! video. Now before we get into things, I just want to give a mention to the fact that I'm doing a giveaway on my Facebook page. There's a link to the page in the description, so if you're interested in picking up some nice freebies uh, courtesy of Konami, then just drop down into the description and head over there. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about YCS Dusseldorf. Uh, specifically YCS Dusseldorf 1, as this is the event which I have the most information about. So a bunch of different things happened. Um, there are some very cool sort of general things that I wanted to pick up before I get into the sort of stats breakdown of the deck domination for this event. But don't worry if that's the kind of thing that's up your street, then that will be appearing very soon. So a few cool things, mostly caught cool from the stream about the event. First of all, we saw Flame Buffalo being used in Salaman Great decks. So if you've seen Raphael Nevin's list, He's playing this card as a way to dig through the deck for non-Salamangrate cards, which can actually be a priority because as soon as you have one or two Salamangrate cards, you're able to establish the combo and have full recursion, so you don't need to be searching for more copies. As a result, we've seen quite a few players who did quite well at the event, playing things like uh, Flame Buffalo instead of Lady Debug, or playing other draw cards, things like Pot of Desires. Um, so a full stats breakdown of Salaman Great decks is something I'm considering creating as a video. So if you're interested in seeing that in the future, very similar to my video about Sky Strikers topping the recent YCS, um, then I can assemble all the data for that and put up a video for you. So let me know by dropping a comment down below just saying uh, Salaman Great's rule or something like that. Um, other things that came up, obviously the Dark Warrior combo is absolutely busted. Uh, the stuff that we've seen from Denka is insane. Um, and his whole team, I think Perico was playing it as well. Just the ability to set up so many forms to disrupt is kind of just phenomenal. Um, I think Tom Rose, the winner of the event, actually said that as well, that it is an absurd deck, it has such a good combo. Um, unfortunately, it just wasn't consistent enough to win out of the event, and we saw that, you know, the other forms of the Orcas combo, uh, which are a little bit more consistent, uh, playing a lower deck count can enable you to win the event just because they have they still have a very strong opening because of Azathoth or just Time Thief Redoer anyway. Uh, so even though they don't typically, you know, loop your entire hand for spells and traps as well, uh, it's still very, very strong. Uh, we saw a few other very cool things. Um, there was the LP combo on the stream with the Pendulum deck, um, summoning out Sloth from the main deck. This is a very potentially viable option for all Pendulum decks that are currently out, since you can put your Dark Worm in the extra deck either through the usual summon and make your uh, Electromite and then bring it back with the Pendulum summon, or you can just use the Electromite to put the LP in the extra deck or the Sloth in the extra deck, um, so that when you have your Pendulum summon you can go through it by that. And it's a very nice uh, option to have given that so many of the decks in the modern format do rely on the extra deck. And it's this exact same reason, um, for this exact same reason that so many of the Salaman Great decks or just various decks from this event did decide to play the Artifact Engine. Uh, so we saw that also in Raf's uh, list, he was playing the Artifact Engine just because you can stun your opponent for a turn from their extra deck and then kill them the following turn with Fusion of Fire. Another very big part of the Salamangrate stats video, um, so keep in touch with that if that's the kind of thing that's int that interests you. Um, some other cool things, Midbreaker Field proved to actually be absurdly good still, even at 1, obviously. Uh, so probably good that it was put to 1, maybe it should be considered as a potential ban option, given just how strong it is. Um, we saw Altergeist and Pendulum players practically disappeared from this event, which we'll be covering a little bit more in the stats section, whereas Crusadia and Subterra and also just random Guard Dragon decks sort of popped out, out of nowhere. Um, I think Subterra had a fair amount of hype anyway, the Crusadia hype sort of rose and then died, and then just seemed to reappear for this event. Um, and the sort of random Guard Dragon decks, like the non-Crusadia um, non builds, and non-just like, I don't know, things like the Blue Eyes build and the Danger build, uh, these have just all been appearing because people don't really respect the power of things like LP and Agapain. Uh, so those are just a few points that I wanted to pick up on. Oh, well, the other thing is that people are still playing Trickstar um, in 2019, uh, so kudos to you guys. 
But that's sort of the, the basic points I wanted to pick up. If there's anything else you think should be mentioned, drop it in the comments section and maybe we can discuss it in there. Um, so let's look at some of the deck ratios that we actually have for this event. So here I have a full breakdown of the uh, decks uh, for round one, round eight, round ten. Top 64, top 8, top 4, the final, and obviously the winner, Tom Rose. Um, now, it's important to note that I, um, I would have liked to have assembled a little bit more data, and I'm hoping that that will appear within the coming week or few weeks. Um, but obviously, you know, it's reliant on people basically uploading uh, deck profiles that aren't the same as other people's. Um, so if you have information about any of the other rounds, or any of the other top cuts like top 32 or top 16, be very helpful to have those. What I'll do is I'll have a Google Sheet within the video description, and uh, if you just send that information across via the Facebook page, I'll be able to add it onto the Google Sheet and we can build up a slightly stronger picture. However, that said, from these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight essentially uh, brackets, we can see some very nice trends appearing. So let's pull up the plot that I put together. So this is the deck breakdown um, just flowing through from round to round. So round one, we see obviously typical YCS fashion, more than 40% of decks just playing other. Um, Salamangra is the next strongest showing, sitting a little bit shy of 20%, so pretty strong looking there. Um, and then things like Thunder Dragons coming in just slightly below. So there's this nice sort of filtration of um, what you can see as the sort of most popular deck, still not even sitting above like 20% for the start of this event. Um, moving forward, you know, reaching into round eight, a lot of people were still competing at the event um, in similar ratios. Uh, so we actually just, we don't see an awful lot of change here. Um, the other drops down only a little bit. Um, and everything else just rises up to fill that boundary. Um, what is this one that's gone down? Oh yeah, Crusadio went down slightly between those. It might be the case here, let me just double check this. Um, because there were a few rounds, yeah, okay, so this is, um, moving into round 8, this is one of the cases where the number of Crusadio players was not actually reported, which is why it's dropped off there, and it's become part of this other group. So it's still a very uh, hefty amount of players, uh, but they've just sort of, they fit into this grey line now instead of the brown line. Um, so then moving into round 10, we see a lot more people have uh, dropped at this point. The Salamangrate line gradually pushing up the other line, gradually pushing down. Everything else pretty stable there. Um, and then moving into top 64. So after players have been cut from this, this is when you start to see the real changes because you, you have an idea of what's actually a relevant deck for the event. Uh, compared to just random decks that sort of people brought along to, to have fun with, really. So if you're looking at a true competitive sense, these are kind of the, the decks you want to be focusing on. So we see Final Man Great, like, totally dominates this in terms of um, majority... Like, it's not the majority of the players, um, but it's the primary source of decks, uh, sitting well over 40% here, 43.8% at this point. Whereas everything else has maintained sort of pretty... So the Thunder Dragon's pretty similar levels, uh, Sky Striker pretty similar levels. They've actually grown since um, since round one because they're just doing very well in terms of making it into top cut. However, everything else being pushed down, the others being pushed down, um, all of the like Subterra, Dark Warrior, etc. Everything gets sort of crushed uh, by the weight of this Salamangrate presence within Top 64, and that's kind of the way it stays for almost the entirety of Top 64. You can see the Salamangrate proportions uh, gradually rise up to hit 50% and stay at that level from Top 8 right through to the final. Um, whereas the other decks sort of dwindle, except for obviously Dark Warrior, and actually the, um, which one is this, the Danger Orcust. Uh, so Dark Warrior and Danger Orcus, I mean, technically you could argue that they're the same deck in a sense, but they have a very different approach to putting the monsters on the field. So since Konami is going to report them differently through their deck breakdown, I'll also be reporting them as different decks for this case. But you can also see that as we progress from um, Top 64 through to Top 8 and even further, the Thunder Dragons die off completely because um, they're just wiped out by the Salamangre presence and the fact that they don't do anywhere near enough against Dark Warrior and Danger Orcus decks. The full combo decks just have a very easy matchup generally against Thunder Dragons, so that sort of wipes them off the map. 
Um, however, they're still a very strong contender for making it into top cut. Uh, you can see also Sky Striker just completely wiped out by this um, massive presence here. Generally, Salamangrate has a very good matchup against Striker. As a result, you can expect that if about 50% of your yeah, if 50% of the field is Salamangrate, you're gonna very you're gonna have a very tough time playing a Sky Striker deck moving into that top cut. And obviously, we head on to top four and the finals. Um, we saw that amazing match between amazing two matches in the semi-final and the final that was streamed. Um, so really fantastic work by all the players involved. Um, but that did, of course, lead to Tom coming out on top with the Danger Orcus build. So let's have a quick comparison of the deck breakdown from this event and from the previous event. So here we have some idea of the sort of way that the decks broke down um, at the most recent event uh, where Raph obviously took first place with his phenomenal Lunalite build. Now notice, obviously, Salamangrates went out at this event. Um, so that's the major driver for this difference with so many Striker and Thunder Dragon players. Striker obviously being the sort of go-to option, um, Thunder Dragon being the go-to option to beat Sky Striker. So that's all I really have to say about YCS Dusseldorf. We've seen some phenomenal stuff coming out of it, some really cool uh, little tech choices here and there. Um, but ultimately, uh, we saw that Danger Orcast becoming the most powerful deck uh, winning out against everything else. But the question is, it still remains, you know, uh, the Danger Orcus deck, while it did win the event, it did not dominate for anything except for at the very end. So is it necessarily the best deck, or is it just the best deck to be Salamangrakes? This is a question that I posed to you, so let me know your thoughts in the comment section, and I'll see you guys in the next video.